Hi, coach. Welcome back to another episode with my good friend, Andrew Cassell from Valor Accounting Services. Andrew, how are you today? I am very well. I'm here in uh, sunny London. How are you doing? Sunny London. Fantastic. I'm very well, very well. Uh, so today, Andrew, we're going to talk about seasonality. All right. So for those coaches who might not understand what seasonality is, it means external factors that might affect your business. So for example, it could be a weather issue, which limits you to training your, your clients. A big example we had recently, well, a couple of years ago was COVID, right? COVID shut everything down and it prevented coaches from uh, working in person with their clients. So Andrew, take it away. Because uh, I know this is something you deal with a lot of coaches on a regular basis. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, thanks, Leo. Uh, definitely, and and also other businesses as well. You know, they're not uh, they're not immune to to uh, seasonality changes as well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just kind of reiterate what Leo said in terms of what is it, what are the various factors. So the first one is weather conditions summer months versus the winter months you know some sports um may require uh certain conditions where it might be milder in the summer months or you know colder in the winter months and sometimes the the pitch just might not um warrant you know staying on there because of the conditions just too bad you know yeah another yeah. one would be is an indoor and outdoor sport you know even though certain sports may not be affected by weather mm -hmm. uh, they can still have their peak seasons as well you know yeah. and we're looking at demand as well demand of the the type of sport and the competition schedule as well so you may have certain leagues or competitions where they are more prominent at sometimes during the year and you would expect the sports coach to be more actively involved during, you know, those periods as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another one would be, you know, school and university terms, depending on who you're coaching, that may affect you as a sports coach. That, And to be honest, a lot of these factors do interlink a lot. Yeah. Because if it's to do with university times, school times, college times, it's going to affect the demand as yeah. well. Yeah. And uh, so, all, all, sorry to cut you out, Andrew, but all these factors are pretty much talking about cash flow, right? Yeah, exactly. And we'll, we'll get on to we'll get on to why these factors can adversely affect your business, mm -hmm. but also can create an opportunity for your business as well. Mm -hmm. Another one is facility availability. You know, some sports rely on specific um, venues, facilities to be mm -hmm. available. That is also an external factor where you as a sports coach have to be aware of to ensure that, you know, the classes still go on um, and everything is running smoothly. Hmm. Right. So what does this actually mean for sports coaches? It's basically to do with quiet and busy periods during the year. Now, for some sports coaches, they may just take you know, holidays. <laughs> it might just be something that they just accept to how it is. And they say, look, we're going to take holidays for, you know, X amount of months during the year. And that's okay. As long as, and we'll go on to the cash flow side of it as well, as long as they've managed to save enough to, to pay themselves during those quiet months um, and any running costs are covered as well. Mm -hmm. You may also get certain, you know, businesses where sports coaches, where they just accept that is how the industry is, you know, do they think that is there another way to deliver, you know, a, a service during the quiet periods, the less active periods. So we're going to basically go through that. But anything from your side, Leo? Yeah, this is this is a, a really interesting topic, especially in our industry, because there's certain times in the year. And I know from working with especially uh, football coaches that a lot of the businesses shut down, essentially. Uh, times such as the summer, uh, when a lot of parents are away, um, Christmas 
is obviously one where everyone's away and there's no one around. Uh, so we're, we're going to get onto it, but what can you do in your business to try and prevent these things from happening? You obviously mentioned a couple. Make sure you have savings in place for those quieter months, or it could be a case of offering other services during those, yeah. those months as well. So yeah, it's a very, it's a very common one. And I want to give the example, and I know we talked about this before we start recording. So on a couple of days ago, I spoke to a, a futsal coach, right? So for those that don't know what futsal is, futsal is an indoor version of, of football. Now, for the last two years, he'd been running his business using the same school, right? The same school, he was using it on a consistent basis, but he came across a problem, which was the hall that they were using, uh, they were, there was a leak, right? So it was just something because it might be because of the weather or it might be just old pipes, who knows? Uh, and that facility became unavailable for that coach to then use. And that affected his business because he didn't have a plan B. So he lost a whole month's worth of income uh, due to that uh, and not having a plan B. And that kind of inter interlinks with what we are talking about today. Yeah, amazing. And that, you know, it really does bring me along into how does it actually affect, how does seasonality affect your sports coaching business? So the first one is cash flow. It means that you're going to have inconsistent income throughout the year. Yeah. What do you do then? You know, as you mentioned, Leo, have savings during the quiet months and we'll get on to what can be done about it. Another one is purely from a business risk point of view. You are going to you are essentially relying on certain times of the year for the majority of your income, sometimes mm -hmm. all of it. Yeah. So what would you do? Do you book facilities in advance to make sure that they're there? Are there any other unforeseen issues? As you very, you know, uh, quite rightly mentioned, there's going to be the, these issues where for a business owner, it's going to be outside, you know, our control. You know, how do we kind of mitigate that? Another one is your annual earning potential by its nature is going to be restricted, restricted due to the seasonality. So let's look at what can be done. So in terms of cash flow, ensure you have sufficient savings to cover your taxes in the year. You don't want to have a situation where you're, you know, you, you, you've you spoke to your accountant and he said you've got X amount of tax to pay and it's during a quiet period and you haven't saved anything for that. Mm. That could be an issue. Uh, cover yearly or monthly costs that are during the quiet periods because some of them you may have to keep them running even if it's quite quiet for your business also paying yourself you've got to live you know you've got to to, to you've got to pay yourself as, as a as a as an owner yeah. as a business owner as well so having enough uh, savings is important another one is cost management where can you reduce costs without without risking the, the 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 quality of service so these may be things like subscriptions monthly subscriptions for certain things there's going to be things that naturally are just not going to be involved like if you have to travel to certain you know facilities of course travel cost is not going to be an issue because you're not going to be going to them during the quiet periods you're not going to be paying for the hire of certain sports facilities However, having said that, you may be on a, 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 it might be a lease hire, a hire where you're on a contract. So that might be another issue as well. Try to cut costs where you can. Yeah. Another one is, okay, so the business risk. Look at where the sources of income are coming from. So if you are, you know, going back to the foot sole uh, example, if he had thought of maybe other spaces to hire as a backup mm. might have been an, might be an idea book them in you know plan ahead of time of course that's the first one but then 
there are going to be things outside of your control where is there's a leak, if there's damages, if uh, if the if the venue is just trying to do a, a complete revamp, like a development, and it's going to be closed for the summer, that's going to be you know effect. And and also that really does come into what we're talking about in terms of demand. There's going to be a lot of demand in some uh, times during the year where there may be other you know events going on. So that'd be another thing as well to to look out for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then annual earning potential. So this is really the crux of it. This is really where it kind of boils down to is providing additional services. Can you do online coaching, consultation, one-to-one training, sports conditioning during the, you know, off-season, mm-hmm. off-season training or mm-hmm. pre-season preparation? Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Leo, you can probably give a bit more information on this because you obviously owned your own um you know sports coaching business Mm -hmm. you can take us through through a bit more about how it all works yeah no i think you've given a some really good examples um one thing i know a lot of coaches struggle with is when we get to like the summer uh groups right so if they've been working with groups throughout the year then when we get to the summer when a lot of people are away you know instead of just kind of giving up with a group because everyone's away there might be two or three parents that want to continue training because they're not going abroad so you might look to set up one-to-one training um as we mentioned you could maybe go online you know do do zoom sessions with kids that are still at your academy but maybe they're abroad so they continue training with you all right so yeah, you've given like some great examples and there's a number of things that you can do to kind of um, limit the risks of uh, seasonality becoming a problem and an issue in your business. Yeah, and, you know, ju- just to give a bit more context as well, uh, I had a, a client who uh, was a, uh, taught Zumba, Zumba uh, and, uh, and conditioning as well and was teaching at a number of different gyms. Mm-hmm. And what happened was when we were, I was working very closely with, with this client still with me. And I realized that there was a major reliance on just two of the gyms. She had a few other ones, but most of the income was coming from 80% of the income was coming from two gyms. Yeah. And I mentioned to this client, look, be aware that if one of these gyms do, uh, you know, remove you from the classes for whatever reason. Could be they may just want to stop that class for whatever reason, or um, there could be other other factors. Just be be aware of that. And what had happened was she started to diversify that and have classes in other gyms to ensure that she wasn't just reliant on those those two. Mm. And what had happened was, lo and behold, one of the gyms actually uh, let her go because they just didn't want to have that class anymore. They were changing the way they were doing things. Mm-hmm. And luckily at that time, she had income from other sources, uh, other gyms. Whereas, you know, it's a relatively new business two, three years in. If something like that happened, that could really affect, um, could really affect her business and maybe, you know, could have thought of, of closing down because yeah. essentially about half of the income would have been gone. So definitely something to think about. And, you know, I think the whole point of this is building a resilient business and a profitable one, mm-hmm. identify risks, ensure that there's reliant, you know, identify where the reliance reliances are. Is it the facilities? Is it the customers? Is it the clients? You know, you may have specific um, groups that are completely reliant and that could be a risk you know also opportunities as well where to invest your time and money and see the trends you know in the industry as well and working with people to to help identify that yeah yeah love love it great information andrew um and going back to your zumba example another example in in football soccer especially here in the uk is a lot of coaches during the winter use a facility called uh, Power League. So Power League is a -a five-a-side venue that has loads of pitches and sometimes coaches use it to hire, uh, 
to, to for their sessions. But, you know, it could be a case where that power leak shuts down for whatever reason. It's going for a bad financial stage. They have to shut down. And then that coach in the winter is left with nowhere to train their clients. So, again, that's another example. And as you said, just, just being, just planning ahead, yeah, identifying the risks, because these things do happen, right? And sometimes it's, it's just out of our control. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, fantastic. Right, Andrew, a anything to add? No, that's it from me, Leo. Excellent. All right. Thank you again for, for jumping on and sharing sharing your knowledge, expertise with us today. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you. See you in the next one. Bye.